Like, what on earth are you talking about? This is two terrorists. How can you assure Canadians that there are no more if you don't understand your own department? Thank you, Minister, for being here, and thank you for your opening kind words. I appreciate that. Um, as we know, we have a very serious situation on our hands, Minister. That's the reason that you are here. Your government has allowed three alleged terrorists into our country through the immigration streams that came ultimately from what we've learned from the RCMP through Globe and Mail reporting, came within hours of murdering an untold number of innocent people, Canadians and Americans, and the latest alleged terrorists that's been gained entry into Canada under immigration streams under your watch, sir. And unfortunately, though it's been several weeks since the first two and a few days since, or a few weeks since the, sec the second iteration, we've yet to find out how this has happened. And to my knowledge, you've made no commitments of how you're going to fix it and prevent it from happening again. What we do know and understand is that your government in the past has directed public servants to fast track immigration procedures to cut some corners, bring in people as quickly as possible. And now we have a situation where we have three alleged terrorists on our hands, so it is reasonable to believe there could be more. So what specific steps have you taken the past few weeks to ensure no more alleged terrorists can gain entry to Canada through our immigration streams? Thank you for the question, MP Dancho. As you know, uh, there are a number of elements about this case that I cannot discuss publicly. Uh, I would also not assume a number of facts that are not in evidence currently, but Again, we take these incidents very, very seriously. I announced uh, in the French portion of my speech that we should come up with a result of our internal investigation within the next mm -hmm. two weeks. Again, those will be made public. I think the discussion here is to see if and when there was any deficiency, if there was one, whether it is one that is systematic, and then how you then remedy that. What we will disclose to you in the next two weeks, obviously we can't disclose today, the investigation is not so complete. So just to but confirm though, you haven't taken any measures to change any procedures whatsoever? Again, nothing, has been, I, nothing has changed? As I've said to you, we are currently investigating mm -hmm. if and when there were any deficiencies the, and what you, measures that. need to be taken. With my knowledge of immigration, the procedures are already known. In fact, your department has provided a list of how the procedures are undertaken. So to me, it's very clear, if you can follow the, follow the trail over the last number of years, you should be able to determine how it is, for example, that the fact that we weren't able to determine there was a 2015 ISIS video where one of the alleged terrorists was dismembering a prisoner back in 2015 that was circulating the Internet, and yet three years later he gained entry into Canada, and in fact went through six different immigration streams since that time and ultimately gained Canadian citizenship. And in that time, there were four red flags flagged for that individual. Three of them were risk indicators. Obviously, none of them were taken seriously or not to the extent that he was not allowed to continue down the immigration streams. What I did find interesting, though, Minister, is that in 2018, your government removed the requirement for police background checks, and are officially called police clearance certificates from the country of origin from countries like Pakistan, and Pakistan ultimately is a bit of a high-risk country to say the least, so it is puzzling that that was done in 2018. This security check was removed, and now we know a student visa from Pakistan gained entry into Canada. Have you reinstated this security requirement, for example? That is an easy step that you could have taken by now. Again, currently, uh, you know that this individual was an asylum seeker. Uh, you know, again, that there are differences with respect to different requires for mints for and the reliability of police certificates at different stages. They vary in oh, excuse their me, quality. Sorry, I, just, I, I may have and misspoke, but I'm talking about assessment. the student visa from Pakistan, the latest alleged terrorist. Not the son, but the student visa sorry, from Pakistan. Sorry, again, uh, and this may be within or not within the scope of this discussion, Mr. Chair. But again, this the person that the latest alleged individual mm -hmm. came in uh, as a student mm -hmm. from Pakistan. Correct. And the details that you have in your chronologies are the ones that I'm at liberty to speak to at this time. Thank you, Minister. But I'm asking specifically about how in 2018 your government removed the requirement for police clearance certificates, ultimately police background checks from the country of origin, from countries like Pakistan. Now we have a student visa holder from Pakistan who did not receive the police, uh, assuming he did not receive the police clearance certificate, unless you can correct me, but that requirement was removed in 2018. So there was a security check removed. That requirement was removed in 2018 from Pakistan for student visa holders. Now we have a situation where your government's brought in a student visa holder from Pakistan who's alleged to be a terrorist. He was on his way to Brooklyn, New York, to massacre Jews. 
and there was a situation where there could have been an additional level of screening that your government removed in 2018. So have you reinstated the security requirement? I'm hearing that you have not done that. I do feel that that's something quite easy that you could do that could provide another layer of security so that this doesn't happen again. Again, we rely on Is that on not our, reasonable? We rely on our security partners to advise us as to the risk profile to take with respect to these Just a common sense approach, though, is it not? Again, uh, you're assuming uh, the reliability and the validity of police certificates. When I appreciate that, but for permanent residents from, a lot more from permanent residents from Pakistan. Again, I, I Thank you, Chair. The practice here is that a question is asked and there's sufficient time for the minister to answer. I would ask that that rule be in place so that we can actually hear the answers. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Connell. Uh, let's uh, let the minister answer the question. We are confident in the progressive nature of the screening process. Uh, police certificates can I do be have requested. to interrupt. Yeah, I said something that's incorrect. Permanent residents from Pakistan are required to provide point police of order. certificates. Mr. Connell, on point of order. Mr. Chair, that's not how this works. The questioner asks the question. The witness has the time to answer, regardless of the opinion of Ms. Danjo. So I'd ask that you implement the rules that we all operate under. Um, I would agree with Ms. O'Connell on this point. If, if we could just let the minister answer. Perhaps he can answer my question on permanent residents. Who's giving, posing the questions or giving the testimony? May I, but I'm my, glad may to I pose the question, question, then he can finish, and then we're done. Uh, I'd appreciate that. I'm sorry, are you the chair? I didn't know. So are you? You're, you're are you that's the not chair? how this works. Are you Hold the that. chair? Can we have a void like crosstalk? So I'm sorry, your time is up. We'll go now. No, I have, I have 11 seconds left, chair. Can we hear the answer, I have, 11 seconds I have left. three seconds left. Okay. All right, on, on permanent residents, are they required for police security checks from Pakistan, yes or no? As a matter yes, of course, yes. Yes, they are. Okay. Exactly. Can we hear the answer? Yeah. Um, he did answer. Yeah, there, were, yeah. there were a cascade of questions there, uh, Chair. What I would say yeah. is that we are confident in our security screening and the progressive nature of them. We believe that the biometrics that every single student needs to submit with uh, very few restrictions give us the confidence we have and the officers in question can ask for police certificates. Again, there are questions around the validity and the reliability of those certificates. Okay, thank you. Um, we go now to Ms. Zaid. Ms. Zaid, uh, six minutes, please. Thank you, Chair, and uh, thank you, Minister, for coming on this important issue. Before I get to my questions, I just want to say that I'm very concerned about the rhetoric we saw from some of my conservative colleagues in the last meeting we had on this issue. This is a very serious issue, and all Canadians want us to get answers on the security processes that are in place for people who are seeking to come to Canada. But as leaders, we also have a responsibility to choose our words carefully. While we do our work, we must be careful not to cast aspersions on all immigrants or all Canadians from minority communities. Conservative members even sought to tie these cases to the Syrian refugee program, which they know is false. We must not fuel online hatred uh, that too often becomes real world violence. I came to this country as an immigrant to build a better life for my children. In few days, it will be 25 years for me here because Canada is welcoming and a land of opportunity. So have many other people. Canadians from minority groups are too often the target of racism and discrimination. I ask that we keep that in mind during this study. Coming to questions, Minister, my first question is, Minister, can you please outline the specific screening measures currently in place to prevent individuals with extremist ties from entering Canada? So can you please elaborate on the portion of this security screening that the IRCC is responsible for? And what happens if IRCC does identify risk indicators on an application? Chair, point of order, please. Yeah, Thank you. I purposely waited until my colleague was done her question. Can we please get clarification on your ruling about the time to answer? I thought the, the time allotted to the member is their time to speak and use as they wanted. Would you please make a ruling on the time to answer the question so we don't keep arguing about that going? We had discussions about this last time, many times. Can we get a ruling from you? I don't believe it's in the standing orders that you have to give the same time 
to answer as you'd ask a question. Could you make a ruling on that, please, Chair? Oh, what is that? So my general practice is to give the witness a chance to answer. If you run out of time right at the end of your six minutes, I will generally give the, the witness, whomever it is, an, an opportunity to answer whatever question was last posed. Um, I will hold the members to their six minutes or whatever the time frame is in the particular instance. Um, within, that, within that rubric, uh, it is your time. However, it is... Uh, I think standing order 18, as a matter of respect, to give people their, uh, you know, an opportunity to to respond properly to the questions you ask. So I will try to try to ad adhere to that as well. So, so we're looking for fairness, a fair, you know, a fair question, a fair response, and uh, you know, if a question is asked, the, the witness should be able to to uh, answer answer the question into as best of their ability. Okay. Okay. Uh, Ms. Saeed, go ahead, please. Yeah. I I asked the question, so Minister, respond. And, and through you, I, I would echo the sentiments of MP Zaid. We would not want uh, aspersions cast on the entire Pakistani community uh, because of the alleged actions of uh, one or, or other individuals or the Egyptian community, for that matter. Uh, and it would be lamentable for that to be the case. This is a question of some detail, so I will pass over the rest of my time to uh, Aisha Zafar to, to answer that. Salma. You're good. Thank you for the question, Mr. Chair, and through you, Minister Miller. So the security screening process is a trilateral program. IRCC definitely is the first line where we look at individuals before they enter Canada. We look, we screen 100% of all applicants who come into Canada. We have these risk indicator packages, which we did talk about before. Happy to go into further detail on those. Those risk indicator packages are not only for individuals who may be engaged in terrorism. They refer to all serious inadmissibilities in IRPA. So that would include our security inadmissibilities, such as terrorism being a danger to the security of Canada, someone who may have engaged in acts of violence that would threaten Canadians, but also espionage, and um, subversion of a, of a government, for instance. Other serious inadmissibilities include human or international rights violations, war crimes, or organized or serious crime. So the risk indicators cover all of what we call serious inadmissibilities, of which terrorism might be one. Our officers are trained on the risk indicator packages if they do notice a risk indicator on an application. And again, that risk indicator is like a clue for the officer that there might be more investigation that needs to be done. They will refer it to CBSA and CSIS for comprehensive security screening. Once CBSA and CSIS complete their screening, they will provide back to IRCC a recommendation from a security screening perspective. So that recommendation will either be favorable, which means they have not identified a serious inadmissibility. It will be non-favorable, which means they have. Or it could be inconclusive. That inconclusive would require the officer to gather more information until they could be satisfied and make a final determination. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Safar. Uh, so it would be right to say that IRCC is responsible for identifying risk indicators and in case, at that point, it is passed to Canada Security Services. Thank you for the question. So IRCC um, has indi risk indicator packages that are developed by CBSA and CSIS. The officer is responsible to determine whether or not a referral for a comprehensive security screening is required. And then the IRCC officer is responsible for the final decision on that application. Uh, uh, what steps are being taken to ensure that violent extremists, particularly those linked to international terror organizations, do not exploit our immigration system? I, just before I answer that question, I do want to s say for the record that the individuals in question had uh, no con connection to the Syrian refugee program. Uh, just if you look at the timeline, it's nonsensical that they would be connected to it. So it was quite obvious if people had examined the chronology in detail. Uh, you know, the, I think what has been stressed, and particularly in testimony that was given to members here by Minister LeBlanc, is the tight, intimate cooperation, security sharing, and discipline that we have with our security partners, most notably Five Eyes, uh, and our ability to seamlessly get information and act on it quickly. Uh, 
the confidentiality and the trust in partners is also capital. Uh, the resources within each member that comprises the Five Eyes and our other partners is, is key to acting quickly. Uh, and in this case, things worked and our security agencies worked. And for that, I thank them. Uh, there is a reason why we have uh, sort of a three-fold approach to security in this country, outside the country, at the border and inside. Um, and in this case, it worked, and we should be quite proud of it. Thanks. Thanks for being here, Minister. Um, since our, our last meeting, uh, another ISIS terrorist was arrested. A plot was foiled. Uh, you mentioned, uh, you alluded to that in your, your opening commentary with Mr. Khan. Um, you previously told uh, Canadians that um, that there was criminal background checks for, um, for temporary residents. There's actually no requirement for a police certificate. So I'm going to go back to that because you were very unclear. In 2018, the government removed means it doesn't require um, the police background checks. That's police clearance certificates from some countries of origin. In the case that we're talking about, Pakistan is included in that, and it turns out that the student that your incompetent pre predecessor gave a visa to um, is, uh, is, is part of that. You removed the security checks. Your government removed the security checks. Now, you know that these, this guy was arrested. You know that a terrorist plot was foiled with the help of, uh, of, of, the U of U.S. intelligence. You know that he was off to Brooklyn to kill Jews. Have you removed or have you reinstated that requirement for security checks that you previously told Canadians that were in place? Again, Mr. Chair, through you, I, I don't want to, in answer, uh, give the impression that I'm validating a number of the facts that I cannot, uh, or alleged facts that I cannot speak about publicly. Uh, I think my question to you, MP Lanceman, is uh, should we assume that uh, were police certificates to have been attained, we would have apprehended this individual? Uh, we are confident in the way our biometric system works, in the progressive screening that operates in our country. Uh, and I think we should disabuse ourselves of the notion that Canada is hermetically sealed and but for one uh, procedure we would have stopped something. It's highly theoretical. It's it's quite speculative. It's, it's um, actually not, Minister. I'm, I'm going to jump in because you require those police certificates for permanent residents. Now, whether you know that or not, um, that's, that's a fact and it's the case. So why wouldn't you require them for student visas? This is how this guy got in. You can ask your predecessor, Sean Fraser, he let him in. And I know that you're cleaning up a mess. And I know that you're cleaning up a mess where I think this government has ruined a generational consensus on immigration. But why do you take them for permanent residence and not student visas? Why is there a different security check if this is the terrorist plot that was foiled under this guy? Not everyone that comes to this country is entitled to become a permanent residence uh, of Canada or indeed a citizen. Uh, we take a progressive risk assessment approach. Uh, the approach works. I'm not saying it's perfect. Uh, and again, you're assuming a lot of facts that are not in evidence uh, to draw a conclusion that may not have been uh, what are you what talking you about there the was an place. arrest made for an ISIS uh, of a uh, for an ISIS plot of a of a terrorist that was about to kill people the minister of public safety during the last time that happened which was just weeks before that uh, arrest another two people were arrested guy was in an ISIS snuff video he went through six different channels of immigration four flags he was checked six times by this country and he was given a citizenship like, what on earth are you talking about? This is two terrorists. How can you assure Canadians that there are no more if you don't understand your own department? Again, uh, let me repeat, uh, and I cannot deviate because, as you'll well appreciate, there is a criminal case. You talked about it in on. your opening statement. I'm asking you a Ms. question. Lansman. Well, you've introduced to this committee uh, a number of alleged facts that I cannot speak to, uh, and I it's don't want fact. to. It's a fact. You lied about it on TV. Again, I Ms. Think, Mr. Chair. Uh, 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 Ms. Lansman, uh, this language is unparliamentary. I would ask you to apologize. I will retract that. You misled Canadians about it on TV. Again, uh, Mr. Chair, through you, uh, as indicated in the chronologies, I, I do want to speak to the decision making of the officers in question that uh, determined that there was no evidence presented to the decision makers themselves at the time that would have rendered these individuals inadmissible. 
So, you, so you're missing evidence. You've re, you, re, you don't require that evidence. Isn't the, like the last thing or the least you can do is require that evidence given that a terrorist plot was foiled. There has been two in the last month and a half. There has been one since, since Minister LeBlanc sat there and said the system is working as it should. Clearly, there's something wrong, and we have to make sure that you can assure Canadians that this won't happen again, and you've remedied nothing. I, I'm trying, I'm failing to understand the argument is the argument that requiring police certificates would have dispensed of all the investigatory work and the work done by our officers to, to foil this plot. I would submit uh, respectively no.